Hi guys, good morning. In this video, we are going to see the problem reorder routes to make all paths leading to the city zero. Problem is exactly what it says. It says that we are given n cities numbered from 0 to n minus 1, pretty cool, n minus 1 roads such that there is only one way to travel between two different cities. And this network is form of a tree. Cool, no worries. Last year, the Ministry of Road Transportation decided to orient the road in one direction because there are too narrow. So basically, we have a tree which is directed tree. Cool. Roads are represented by the connections where connection is just an edge between AI to BI. It's just an edge between AI to BI. Uh, this year, there is a big event in the main city, capital city zero, and many people want to travel to the, to the city zero. So your task is to reorient some nodes such that each city can visit zero. So as we know that our cities were directed. So we had this tree which was directed. Let's say it is the city zero. Now we have to make such that every city can actually visit this city zero by this path. So every city should be able to visit city zero. That is our main task. Return the minimum number of edges that needs to be changed. So let's start with the problem itself. Reorienting some nodes such that each city, each city means me city except zero because zero is at, at itself zero. So we don't have, don't have to visit zero each city which means 1 2 3 up to n minus 1 needs to visit 0 let's see the itself that each city needs to visit visit city 0 so for every city x i just try to reach and go 0 but we know that our graph is directed so it is not necessary that from every city i can reach to city 0 so for that let's make that graph undirected or which means that if the edge is like this only so what i will do i will also add an edge like this which means that it will be bi-directional right so what i did was i can i can just make the graph bi-directional because i just want to visit from city x which is x is 1 2 3 4 up to minus 1 to city 0 it is what the question is saying what i have to do i'm just following the question itself nothing extra right now cool then but 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 for every city x which means that for every node in the graph let's say one three two four five you want you will try to go and visit zero which means that for one you will do a bfs or dfs and go zero for three you will do a, a bfs or dfs you will visit zero for two you will also do, do the same for four you will also do the same for five you will also do the same which means for n minus 1 nodes, you have to travel n, which will result in a complexity of n square. Isn't that pretty much? For n nodes, you are traveling to city 0, that will be O of n square. Let's think complexity is more. For sure, we know that because that op we can not afford to be n square in this. Let's see um, what we can do. Let's try to optimize it. So basically what we are doing is for every city x, I am going to city 0. It's the reason that, okay, I was actually having n minus 1 cities and to go, it is taking n, n time. So rather than this n minus 1, is it possible I can just have one city? Why not? See, as you can see that we are going like this, right? From 1 to l, like 1, 2, 3, n minus 1 to 0. How about we reverse it? We go from 0 to every city. Thus, from 0, which is 1 city, I just go to every city, which is just n minus 1. As simple as that. This is how we can optimize it from n square to O of n. And it's a standard trick which can be used in future if you are just seeing that, okay, from multiple nodes, I need to visit a particular node, let's say x, or let's say 0. And it is like having a high time, high time complexity. So how you can optimize it? Just remember, it's a standard trick and it will be used especially in the weighted problems. Whenever you are having multiple cities or graphs or nodes and you want to reach to a particular node, let's say zero, then 
if it is having high time, high time complexity, then you, what you can do to optimize it to start from the node zero itself and try to go to every node. It will help you a lot. Cool. It is what we're going to do that we will try to go from zero to every city and nothing but a standard beef or DFS we can do. Now, uh, now it's just the same problem. Okay. I have this node zero. I have to go to every city, which is one, two, three, four, and so on. But as you know, the graph was unidirectional, which means that it is not necessary that the edge will be from zero to one only. It can be from one to zero itself. It can be any way possible, right? So if we want to traverse, we have to make it bi directional. So let's try. Let's make this graph. So basically the one in the blue is last. It's let's see the like natural nodes, which were already there. The one in the pink are the ones which I added. Right. So I just made this graph bi-directional, which means I can go from one to two now and one to three now. But, 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 uh, I didn't, if I have to go and like you said, okay, I just, I just have to make it bi-directional, but how to make it bi-directional? Cool. No worries. See, one option is that, okay, you just know the natural nodes. You can just store in a map what are the added nodes. Like for the nodes 1 and 2, the natural is from 1 to 2. And the added one is from 2 to 1. I can just use a map. Or, see you can see, it is taking extra space because map will take extra space of O of N to store those N nodes. Or they can optimize it and just do something like having a sign. See, it's just either this way or this way right so whenever we have two options what we do either a zero one or a plus minus so we just have to say okay for an edge we have two main options either this or this so either i can just assign a zero and a one i, I can assign a positive and a negative so we usually like do something like this when we have two options and we had to assign some values to it so i will do the same thing i'll just assign a positive and a negative to what like positive is actually like the, like the, uh, the natural edge is the positive edge and what I added will be in the form of a negative. How? Let's see. 1 to 2. It is in the pink one which is added 1. So I did a minus 2. Rather than 2, it is a minus 2. It, sh it shows me from 1 to 2, there is no edge. I added that edge. From 2 to 1, there is a natural edge which is the blue one. From 3 to 1. It's the added one, which is the pink one. So I did a minus one. From one to three, it's a natural one, which is a blue one. So I did add the three, simple three. It is how I can make my adjacency list, which will represent me. Oh, which node has an added edge and which node has a natural edge. Cool. So by this, I can just help. By this, I can just get to know, okay, which is the natural edge and which is the added edge. If I am standing at the node one, and I want to go to any node, let's say node. So if this node is negative, which means that my one to node was not there, I just added that sign, which is one to node. So already it means that my one, my node to one was there and not one to node. If my node is negative, if my node is positive, which means that, okay, one to node was there and it was not there. Cool. So with this, I can just get to know, okay, if one to node is there or not, if one to node is there, then my node is less than zero. Then my one to node edge is not there. I just added that edge. If node is positive, then one to node, one to node edge was there. Cool. Now we have got, okay, we'll start from zero. We'll just have the tree as bi-directional. We can go to every edge and we also know, okay, which edge is actually the added ones nothing remains as of now we can just do a simple bfs or a dfs and by this we can just get to know okay what's the edge which is being added while i was doing a bfs which means i'll just start from zero i'll just go to one i'll see if i am going to one because see i just i can easily go to one because the edge is what is what bi directional so i can easily go to one but when i reached one i'll check okay was the edge naturally present or it was the edge which I took which means if my one is negative if my one is negative so 
the edge like this would not have been present but the edge like this would have been present right if my one is negative so the opposite edge would have been present and ultimately what my mean name was to move from 1 to 0 which means 1 to 0 will be moved so if my 1 is negative I can actually move from 1 to 0 although I'm moving from 0 to 1 for optimizing my algorithm but ultimately my aim was to move from 1 to 0 right thus I can easily say if my 1 if, if, we, if means if I'm reaching to a node 2 uh, let's say the variable name is to2 then I can say okay my if my this node 2 is negative which means here the node number is 1 so I can just say okay my node is negative I have that backward edge which means okay I don't have to change my edge but 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 if it is positive then if it is positive which means my node 1 is positive then the edge would have been something like from 0 to 1 but ultimately my main aim was to reach from 1 to 0 thus I will just add an extra edge or I can just say I have a variable called as change in which I will add a plus one because it's not required I have to change this and bring it something like this so it's pretty simple let's see the problem uh, algorithm pretty quickly I'll just dry run also for you guys because sometimes it becomes hard okay how this how this DFS is working but DFS is the easiest thing you can do it's short and simple uh, let's see firstly we make a graph by making the graph although it was unidirectional Although it was unidirectional, which means from node U to node V, I had an edge, but I purposely added an edge from node V back to node U, but I just made sure that okay, from let's say if node U to node V, I had an edge, but from V to U also I'm adding back, but I'll just make sure when I'm adding back to let's say, let's say node V, I'll just make that negative so that ultimately I can just remember, oh, if it was negative, so the backward edge was present which means I'm good. Now I'll just do a standard uh, DFS, which will actually give me the number of changes required. At every start of the DFS, I'll just have a variable called as change, which will give me the number of changes required in that subtree. Uh, I'll mark that node as visited because I don't want to visit the node again and again. Uh, then I will go on to every child of that root node, like from is my just root node and to is my child node. I'll just say if that child is not visited, then I will visit it. But you can see, I just checked for the natural child. Like I for visited, I can't have in my visited like the negative ones. So to check okay, if the node is visited or not, I just have the absolute value, which means it will just check, okay one is present or not first present or not it will not it will not check minus four minus two it because it minus four minus two was to actually let me know if the edge was backward or forward it was not for me to know if it was present or not visited is for present and not for backward or forward cool then i will just have a change variable which will actually bring me the number of changes in the subtree plus if it is, it is the condition I showed you above. If I'm from 0 to 1, if this 1 is positive, if this 1 is positive, which means my actual edge was something like this from 0 to 1 only. But ultimately, I wanted something like from 1 to 0 because I have to go from 1 to 0, right? My main aim was 1 to 0. So I need to add an edge. If my this node 1 is more than 0, which means positive but if it is it, if it is negative which means if this number is negative minus one so the edge something like this have been present right and i actually wanted this because i wanted to go from one to zero thus i added a one because of this that okay if i'm reaching to a node and if it is negative then i have to add an edge backwards and ultimately i can just return a change let's dry run pretty quickly it's pretty easy uh if we have the graph something made like this i just made an adjacent list something like this because minus uh four is representing the backward edge the white one is the edges which i have added and the orange ones are the ones which were in the problem itself cool we start from the uh zero uh dfs we just do from zero then our ch childs are one and minus four right five minus four because white edge i have added it was not naturally present cool then i have this one i have this minus four i just go on to one if it is positive positive which means backward edge is not present it, it means it was a natural edge so i have to add a backward edge which means i have to add in a change so the change is required here while it is minus four which means that the edge would have been present something like this 
from 4 to 0 as you can see the, the natural edge falls from 4 to 0 so it will just say me if, if it is minus 4 which means that okay from 0 to minus 4 the edge like this i have added it was not the natural edge and the natural edge was from 4 to 0 if it is because i just actually want it from 4 to 0 itself so i just added if it is saying okay if it is minus 4 which means I had that natural edge which I wanted from 4 to 0. So I just had no change required. Then, then it will again go from this one. It will again go do a DFS. Then from 4 it will again do a DFS. Ultimately it will just go to 3. It will check if it is more than 0. Which means oh. The edge. Orange edge is the natural edge. Which means I just wanted an edge backwards. I have to do a change. A change is required. I will go from 4 to 5. Oh. It's also positive, which means orange one is po is natural edge. I have to again add a backward edge because I wanted to go from 5 to 4 and back to 0. A change is required. The changes will become 3. Earlier it was 1. Again, it will land on 3. It will land on 5. 5 is just a leaf node. It, it can't go anywhere. So nothing required. 3, uh, it just landed to a minus 2. Or you should actually say 2 where the actual node is minus 2. Minus 2 will, rep it will represent, okay, the edge is the white one, which is I have added, which means the natural one would have been reverse one only. Right, see, as you can see, natural one was reverse one. Uh, I am super fine if it is minus 2. So if it is less than 0, then no change is required. My changes still remain 3. And ultimately, it will just go on to 2. It's a leaf node. Again, the change will not affect because it's a leaf node. Complexity is nothing but as you are going on every node once a time. So it is just O of N to visit every node. Space is also O of N because firstly for storing our graph which is adjacency list. Then also for the visited array which is boolean array. You will say okay I know you said about the map and stuff. See it's just you are using an extra N. Right. So it will not increase the complexity in O terms. But actually in the actual complexity terms it will increase in plus N something like that. So it's good to actually optimize it as as much as possible so yeah by this we can actually get to know okay how we actually have to do a dfs in this we can also do a bfs but a dfs is always better and easier when both can be done so i hope that you guys liked it if yes then do the like button and see you guys next video until then goodbye take care